Here we are. I don't know that. There should be. There are two. There are two, yeah. Uh, Jeff. And oh, the I numbers, gave, I gave numbers all my are identical. <laughs> well, I'll share with you. I'll share with you. We worked okay. together for a long time. Okay. Okay. The, the, num the numbers are identical, so uh, yes, should, shouldn't be a problem. A, the, 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 the jokes are so different. The jokes are different. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, the changes are relatively minor. Um, I don't say that lightly because I know with, after after all that's been cut and all the the effort that's gone in the budget, a uh, few million dollars here and there make a huge difference, and it's not easy to to uh, uh, deal with that. But the trajectory that the economy was on that, that we saw in July is uh, uh, has not really shifted into a higher gear. Uh, so we've, we're looking at a, a delayed recovery relative to where we were at last July. And even though revenues have performed well to date, uh, when we look at the economic externals, um, we're, we're going to have a little bit less revenue in fiscal 12. Uh, then we thought again. It's it's um, it, it's very very small. And in fact, if you include the the adjustments of the cigarette tax and the transportation infrastructure bonds, uh, you'd actually end up with more revenue, not less. But it's it, in the general fund uh, available. The general fund about a million eight uh, less in fiscal 12. Both the T fund and the education fund are down about 300,000. And then in fiscal 13, it's about 9.3 million to the to the uh, general fund and about 800,000 each to the education and transportation funds. So, uh, uh, it, it, in in fiscal 14 and 15 relative to the last forecast, and this is the first time we've published the 14 number, even though they it's used internally uh, uh, by both the joint fiscal office and the administration. Uh, the uh, the numbers have gone up, so it's about 13. Point uh, four million more in 14 and uh, 13.8, yeah, yep. and uh, 26 something in 15. Yep. So uh, it's it's pushed the recovery back. Uh, it's still happening, but uh, they there's, keep there's a lot of uncertainty. They keep pushing the the point in time. I mean, we're we're in this. You know, when you consider how far down we were, for how long we were down, um, it's really been a, a kind of tepid uh, rate of recovery. And it seems like every time we come before you, uh, the consensus economic forecast is is that, well, by such and such a time, and every time we come for you, they push it out another six, nine, 12 months. But I think there's good reason for it this time. I mean, you know, last year, when we were sitting here at this particular point in time, things are actually looking much more encouraging. Um, then along came things like rising energy prices. Then along came the, you know, the terrible tragedy in Japan and the resulting tsunami which interrupted you know, some of the, chain, uh, 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 the uh, supply chain for automobile manufacturers. And then you know, we had concern, we had run up in food prices. And, um, and then along came the manufactured you know, debt ceiling crisis, which really eviscerated confidence on the part of a lot of businesses and on the part of a lot of households. And so really what's happened is even though we can sit at our computer terminals and say, see, that number's going up. Um, it's not going up any near, anywhere near where you would expect it to be, and they're and you know throw in on top of that, you know the three crises that we're dealing with in Europe, you know between the sovereign debt, the currency, and the central and the European banking crisis, and you know actually you know if we were to sit here and just give you straight mathematical results, the numbers would have been more negative than they turned out. Um, but you know there is something to be said that you know the economy did take on a brighter tone the, the, the uh, last part of the last quarter. Um, revenues have been performing reasonably well. Uh, I mean, even in the T fund and the motor vehicle purchase and use tax, which had a lousy first four months, had a good month five and month six. Um, so we already have made some adjustments for the fact that you know we saw a little bit of a brightening tone to things at the end of the first half. But it's certainly you know so what that does is that that has put most of the forecast risk on the downside. I am very concerned about April. I mean, we basically had the. The, in the last couple of weeks of uh, December, everything that the equity markets were up wiped away. Um, you know, basically, so it was less than up at half a percent, which you have to go back to the early 80s to find the last time that the stock market did that. Uh, property uh, sales haven't been all that robust, and those are the two areas where we get the capital gains, which in turn flow to us in, in, in uh, April. Uh, now, there has been some reasonably good business profitability, so when we get to April, the people that pay their business tax through their own personal tax, we may see some bright spots there. Uh, personal income estimates, when you eliminate kind of the dislocations that have been happening because of the alternative minimum tax and what preparers are telling people that because it's a tax preference item and that you shouldn't pay it by the end of December, that you should might wait to pay it 
uh, by uh, the 15th of January because at least this year they may do something about the alternative minimum tax so you won't lose that deduction. If you take all those things into account, we feel comfortable with the forecast, but um, you know, certainly April this year is gonna be much more uncertain than any Aprils I think that we've seen in the last, even when we were in a recession the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Yeah, there are a couple of technical things too, just about where we are uh, with revenues to date that you need to keep in mind. Um, you know, corporate looks like it's way ahead, like four and a half million ahead. And if you look at the revenue, uh, the refunding pipeline, and and just you know, individual circumstances, advance payments, things like that, uh, uh, that's not altogether real. We we expect that to end the year actually a little bit lower than than had been forecast. Same with uh, motor vehicle fees. There's just some timing issues with that. That, that you know, we're not counting all of that as being real. So, um, the the higher gas prices are what weigh on the on the T fund. fund, and and you can see in the way that the the transportation infrastructure bond funding mechanism works, how you get some protection if you've got a tax that's based on the the volume of the sales instead of the, the gallonage because. You know, you get a price spike, and and you know your revenue keeps growing. Of course, your needs keep growing. So, uh, just just as a, a construct for a, a tax like that, it's going to be more sustainable. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is when you look at the corporate tax, it's one of the most difficult ones to forecast. It's always the most volatile. And when we sat before you over in the pavilion building in July, we were saying, you know, a good chunk of this, over half of the 35 million positive revenue forecast variance we had last summer, was accounted for by those special factors in the in the in the uh, corporate income tax. And we didn't believe those. And so, you know, when we came in before you, I know that there was some concern. How could revenues be up $35 million and you're not giving us anything we're near that in terms of an upgrade? Well, a lot of it was because of those special factors. And, you know, I'm actually very glad that we didn't do that because we have been in, in here talking to you about downs of over $20 million if we had allowed that and didn't, you know, really critically evaluate and understand that, that those were overpayments that we were eventually going to refund. Still, I think the state of Vermont is doing relatively well compared to uh, most of the rest of the country. There, there are two sets of um, uh, uh, charts, the two pages each um, that are in here that are these bar charts that uh, sort of rank states. And, and then uh, we've got Vermont kind of called out on those. And then uh, other New England states and New York uh, in, in a uh, different tone, also pink tone. But uh, the, the first one, which is uh, page four, uh, it says, where are the jobs? Uh, so, so this one is current employment relative to the pre-recession peak. So it's saying from, uh, you know, in the period 2007, 2008, what was the highest employment number for each state? So it can be slightly different time period. And then uh, where is it uh, relative to that in November of 2011, which is the last state level observation that we have. And, uh, you know, you can see that uh, there, there are a few states that pretty much didn't have a recession, not too many, uh, but North Dakota, you know, is, is off the chart. And, and there are a couple energy. times I had a North Dakota, well, energy and a very small yeah. state. So it doesn't take very much investment mm -hmm. to, you know, bump up numbers there. Um, but, but energy with the other states also, Alaska, Texas, Oklahoma, states like that have, have generally uh, uh, fared much better. But you, you'll see that Vermont ends up you know, uh, uh, pretty high in the rankings, certainly uh, within our region uh, and nationally. We're 12th on both of these charts. So uh, uh, we're down uh, in jobs about 2% from the peak. And then if you look at the next page, it shows growth since the low point. So the low point of the recession uh, in terms of employment uh, uh, would have been reached uh, sometime in 2009, 2010, again, for most states. And then this shows the percent change. So every single state has growth. Uh, some have recovery. minuscule uh, Mostly growth. it's recovery. Well, it's recovery, yeah. but we're not back up to the peak yet. That's right. what the two charts are showing. But yeah. Vermont, you know, stacks up pretty well on that. The other set of charts uh, are further in pages 11 and 12. In it, and this looks at uh, real estate markets and, and the housing bubble, which is uh, uh, one of the things that precipitated this recession. And certainly, the states with the worst economies right now uh, uh, are those that have been most subject to corrections in the housing markets. So, the last quarter, which is 2011, third quarter, is on page 11. And that also ranks the state. And you see Vermont's best in the region, uh, decline of about half of 1%. We expect declines to occur for probably another two to three quarters before this bounces along uh, at a pretty low rate. And that's baked into the grand 
Liz forecast that uh, uh, is done fall. separately. We do it each each fall, um, and so we're not going to get a lot of growth there. But uh, but the declines will be Can will I be in. That? Are you saying you're expecting nationally? For two or three quarters continued decline in Vermont. In Vermont. In Vermont. Two or three quarters yeah. more. Yeah, and uh -huh. that's using the Federal Housing Finance Agency index, which includes it's refinancings. And things it's, like the it's the best of, measure of overall price. Much bigger mm -hmm. sample uh, than some of the narrower measures that are just city specific. So, and this tracks unbelievably well with our grand list with some lags and and, and such. So, it's it's a very useful measure for us to look at. Been around for about 15 years. Right? Yeah, and it's yeah, just, it's just it's, keeps going. It's, it's been amazingly it's the accurate. Ready, it's yeah. the uh, ever ready Energizer Bunny model. It's well, it's, it it uh, in 2006 was the first time that model forecast. The 2010 grand list would show a decline. And, you know, there weren't a lot of forecasts in 2006 that were saying that about uh, housing markets, but, but the, uh, that was. Uh, if you look at the uh, four-year period, you'll see more the magnitude of the crash. And this isn't necessarily peak to trough, but, um, uh, again, the, the states that are worst off, Nevada, Arizona, Florida, California, you know, with declines in, in Nevada.